What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and as you all probably already know by now, the NYC subway shooter Frank James has been located and arrested. But I noticed there is a lot of misinformation out there about the details leading up to his arrest, and I'm here to clear all of that up and give you all the real story of how this went down. Yesterday, after he allegedly carried out this attack, he fled on the same subway train that he carried out the attack in. So literally the subway train com comes, the doors open. You see that someone was already miraculously outside of the subway train, just knowing to record this moment. You see smoke pour out. You see people run out of the train. Well, apparently some people stayed on the train. Literally shots are being fired and everything. This is New York. A lot of these people didn't even bat an eye that were in, you know, further down on the train. And they stayed on the train and the attacker stayed on the train as well. And he escaped via the subway system. And I don't even want to use the word escape because it doesn't look like anyone tried to find him. In fact, he was roaming around New York City ever since the attack, ever since yesterday. This morning, he went out for a nice coffee. He was walking around, enjoying the fresh air, decided to go get a biscuit at McDonald's. And he was literally waiting to get caught. I am not exaggerating. He was literally strolling around New York City waiting to get caught. No one caught him. No one found the guy. If, and if he didn't turn himself in, he would still be out there on the loose. Notice what I just said. He turned his own self in. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This story gets a little bit crazier. It turns out, that this guy, Frank James, was getting impatient. The police weren't finding him. The police weren't putting enough of an effort up to try to find him. And he was getting impatient. So he called Crime Stoppers himself to turn himself in or to tell the police the area that he was in. Literally, no joke. I am dead ass serious right now. He walked around New York City all day. We have various pictures of him around New York City, just chilling, just chilling. If you live in NYC, chances are you had a coffee right next to him earlier today. Chances are he passed by you while you were walking to work. No one batted an eye. But supposedly NYPD, on the same block that he was caught on, they were down the street, break, down the street breaking up a homeless encampment. While Frank James, the NYC subway shooter, was outside Frank James in it up. I mean, he looked exactly like the pictures. He was wearing the same outfit and everything, just chilling. Just chilling. Biggest city in the world. Cameras everywhere. People everywhere. Just right there, hiding in plain sight. And in all honesty, maybe that was probably one of the best strategies that he could have um, taken. Hiding in plain sight because he's someone who could very much blend into a crowd. He looks like just any of the other guys that you pass by in NYC. But that's what the NYPD was doing. They didn't really catch the guy. The guy who um actually found him, I think his name was Zach. He found him after, after Frank James actually made the call. So what happened is Frank James is chilling. He's eating a biscuit. He's watching all of these police pass by to go break up this homeless encampment down the street. And he feels insulted. Here he is, the guy that just carried out this attack and it seems like no one cares. So he calls and he's like, hey, I see my pictures all over the news, my pictures everywhere. I'm over here by, by McDonald's. I wanna clear this up, come get me. The NYPD took so long to get there that he had already wandered off from McDonald's. And this guy, Zach, found him a little bit further down the street, just wandering around, chilling, sitting down at a bench, just hoping that the police would catch him. But they didn't. <laughs> he had to call and turn himself in. And all of the details around this whole attack are just shady. Everything's really weird. I don't want to really get into it here on YouTube because, I mean, that's just... It, it runs deep. It runs deep. This guy was obviously psychotic. But I almost feel as if he was let loose to carry out this attack almost purposely. Like, that's the vibe I'm getting because 
as someone who runs a YouTube channel, I do not understand how this guy was allowed to post these videos and how they stayed up. All of my videos that I've made about him, multiple have been taken down. Like they won't even let me post them on YouTube. The others have been um, hit with strikes. So they can't be monetized or anything like that. YouTube won't promote these videos in the algorithm. So basically, YouTube will allow Frank James to go on to go on YouTube, talk about literally killing other races of people. That's allowed. But if I go on YouTube and call out Frank James for what he's saying, it's not allowed. That's how this works, people. It's extremely frustrating. If if you all only knew, if you all only knew how it feels to run a YouTube channel and to be behind the scenes, and I could literally watch in real time what stories the elites or whoever's running this world don't want to get out there. This is one of them. All of these videos are being demonetized. Half of them are being deleted. Yet this guy was allowed to stay online. The FBI knew about this guy. He was on the FBI watch list. And then they took him off the list. And then he carries out this attack. Let that sink in, folks. He was on the FBI watch list. They knew about him. They took him off the watch list. Short time later, he carries out this attack. His videos were allowed to stay on YouTube, although I can tell you 100% fact, they all are against every community guideline you could think of. And in fact, he had multiple YouTube channels. One of them is still up. Everyone thinks that his YouTube channels are all deleted. He had... As far as I know, he had three. Two are gone. One is still up. You could go look through some of these videos right now at the time of this recording. And I tried to tell people that earlier, but everyone's saying, no, it's deleted, it's deleted. No. One of his channels is still up. I can't post the link because when I post the link, they keep deleting it. So all I can do is post a picture of the YouTube channel. But it's still up. So this guy was on the watch list. He was recently taken off the watch list. And then he carries out this attack. And miraculously, although most of all the other cameras in these subway stations are working, this one stop, the cameras weren't working. Although there's a lot of police throughout the subway in different stops in New York City, there's not a lot of police here at the stop that day. So, I mean, it, there's just a lot of weird things. When, when these things happen sometimes... A lot of times it almost looks like, I mean, I don't know what is how what to really call it. It's like it's it happens naturally, but it's almost like guided to happen. Like the like there was warnings there in the FBI and different law enforcement agencies maybe even knew this was coming, but they kind of chose not to do anything about it because maybe they want to capitalize on it. There's already some of the strictest gun laws you can think of in New York, but of course, maybe they want to crack down even harder. Maybe they want to bring the stop and frisk back at the subway stations if it's gone already. I'm not sure if they still do that or not. I haven't been in, in NYC in years. I haven't been to NYC since middle school. And I know the crime there is horrendous. And, oh man, it's such an incredibly crazy situation, but I wanted to clear that up. Because this story is undoubtedly going to get memory hold. It doesn't fit the narrative. We've seen this happen before already just recently with the Christmas parade tag. And they're going to shy away from this guy's motives. The FBI literally yesterday reached out to various news outlets and made them take down the description of the suspect. Because in their descriptions, they said the suspect was black. And they made sure that all of these media outlets took that out of their description. So yesterday, a lot of people in NYC were given a very vague description of this guy because they deemed it as, oh, maybe that's kind of racist or something if you just give the description of what the guy looks like. So half of these people had no idea what he looked like. And then again, they said the guy was 5'5", five, five, 170 pounds. This guy is definitely taller than 5'5", five, five, and he looks like he's 300-something pounds, maybe four. So I don't know. And like I stated, when he called in, he called in saying, oh, we got to clear things up. So obviously he thinks he's going to outsmart the police and say that he has nothing to do with all of this. Also, 
before I end this video, there's a lot of misinformation out there acting like this guy was homeless, broke, and mentally ill. I mean, obviously, he probably has some mental issues, but he's not homeless. He's not broke. From what I understand, he actually has two places of, two places of residence. Um, I think he just recently got a, a new apartment somewhere. He has a storage unit. He had the money to rent a U-Haul, drive all the way around NYC. Supposedly, he was sleeping in the U-Haul. I'm not sure about that, but this guy is not some homeless dude off the streets. This guy is someone who had money and who I don't want to say that he planned this out. Obviously, he had a plan, but I don't know how long it took him to plan this out because you just got to really go through his YouTube videos to understand because sometimes, I mean... He would talk about certain things, like talk about his him wanting to hurt people. But there was, I don't know, it, it's something that's really hard to explain. But I get the sense that maybe this wasn't something that he planned out for a long time, because just recently, literally just recently, he was talking about how he might do something like this, but he doesn't want to go to jail and go to prison. So he's not going to do something like this. So I don't know when he determined in his mind that he was going to do this. Although on this YouTube channel that is still up at the time of this recording, he has a video titled April 12th. The video is a couple of hours long. I haven't listened to the whole thing. What I have listened to is basically him ranting. It doesn't necessarily point towards that he was going to do this attack a year later. But I just find it odd that he has a video titled April 12th. And then one year later, he carries out the attack. So... There's a lot of stuff to unpack here. I'm still trying to go through some of these videos. If you get the chance, do the same because the mainstream media is not going to tell you the truth about this story. We all already know that. But for now, go ahead and leave your thoughts down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you on the next video.